Steve Pajowski here is one of our partner companies you may have heard of, Thomson Reuters. I'm going to turn the presentation over to him. So I'm Steve Pajowski from Thomson Reuters. Uh, this is the first of a series of three presentations that are going to touch upon the, uh, the Marcouche area. So first, uh, an introduction uh, from me really on just the basics of uh, what Marcouche structures are and why they're important. Uh, and then the following two presentations uh, from Chemaxon and, and from Pfizer will really give you more details on the uh, uh, features available through the, through the JCHEM system and uh, from Chris how the uh, how that's, this has really been used in practice, so, uh, so it should be a, a, a nice session for, for those of us interested in, uh, in, in uh, how Marcouche is, is being used. Uh, so what I'm going to do is first answer a, a couple of uh, important questions. So firstly, uh, just as a basics, what is a patent? Uh, what are these Marcouche structures? Uh, how can we understand them? Uh, and then a case study, so in a, a typical patent search involving involving Marcouche. Uh, so firstly, uh, what is a patent? Well, it's uh, uh, generally considered to be an agreement between uh, the inventor and the, and the, and the state, the government, uh, which gives the inventor uh, certain rights. So amongst those, the, the right to exclude others from using their invention is, is, is granted for a, a fixed time period. Uh, and important to realize that that uh, individual patent documents are only valid, uh, only valid in the, the country that uh, they've been uh, obtained from. So this gives rise, of course, to the patent family concept, where you can see uh, often a, a large number of patent documents from around the world that protect the same, uh, the same invention. So this is, of course, one of the things that we do at Thomson Reuters is track the, the ongoing patent publications and compile these patent families so that uh, where, we're, where we're running a patent search, we're really uh, seeing... Uh, individual inventions, which, is, which encompass a, a whole series of documents in many cases, which we call the, the, the patent family. Uh, and then, of course, in exchange for, the, for this uh, um, uh, monopoly, which the, the inventor will get once the patent is granted, uh, they must disclose the full details of their invention uh, within the patent document. So, of course, this helps to spread the technology and generate, of course, new ideas. Okay, so once, uh, once you have a, an invention that you want to seek patent protection for, uh, you must take your uh, uh, patent application to the patent office uh, in the country in question. Uh, and as I said, you must include full details of the invention within the patent so that someone who's skilled in your area of technology can uh, duplicate your invention. So really the opposite of keeping your, your invention secret is to really patent it. You must disclose then full details of the invention. And the, the building there is the United States uh, uh, Patent and Trademark Office uh, over in Virginia. Uh, so moving on to just look at more detail of what's actually in the patent itself. So a patent, uh, for our purposes, both, is both a legal document, so actually protecting the, the, patent, the invention in a legal, uh, from a legal perspective. Uh, it's also really a scientific paper, so because of all the, uh, the, the detail in there, really consider it to be a, 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 a paper of um, uh, important uh, scientific disclosure as well. So the front page of the uh, United States uh, patent is shown here, uh, including details of uh, uh, who, the, who the patent assignees are, who is the inventors, uh, brief details of the, the invention itself, as, as well as other things like the publication dates. So all of that kind of stuff is in there. But as well as that, if it's a patent in the chemistry area, you'll often see a series of examples showing you the, uh, the synthesis preparation of uh, some of the claimed compounds. So they're full, really full um, synthesis details included in there as well. So lots of scientific data as well as, uh, as, well as the actual legal part itself. So why would we want to search these patents? So uh, to be patentable, an invention must be new and useful and unobvious, uh, certainly in the, in the United States. Uh, and because of that, the patent literature is, is full of the, 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 the latest useful and practical ideas around the, uh, the, the inventions in your particular areas of interest. Uh, patents must also be the first uh, publication of a new invention. So by, by keeping uh, abreast of the latest patent documents, 
we will be looking at uh, the, the very latest information that's really available. So it's really state-of-the-art information is available from patents. Also unique information. So those studies have shown uh, that uh, between 70 and 90% of the information in patents has never been disclosed elsewhere. Uh, and then because of the patent family that I described, the, the technical content of a patent is often available in your local language. So, uh, for example, if you want to uh, maybe uh, read the content of a Japanese patent, you can often find that there's a, uh, a, an English language equivalent or an equivalent in another language that, uh, that, that you can read if you, if you don't read uh, uh, Japanese. So it's uh, often, often useful to track the patent families from that perspective also. One of the things uh, that we like to describe uh, for intellectual property uh, is the intellectual property life cycle or the IP life cycle that, uh, that we've shown here. Uh, so beginning with the, the research and innovation phase, going through the application and, and prosecution, uh, going around uh, past the maintenance and monitoring stage. There's a lot of obviously licensing possibilities around the, 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 the ownership of patents. Um, patents, of course, also have a limited time frame that they're valid in. So beyond that time frame, the technology is free for others to use. So we often hear this freedom to operate expression uh, uh, in conjunction with patents. So any patent that's expired or where the fees haven't been paid, that technology is uh, free, free to use for everyone. So this is the, 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 uh, the IP life cycle. Uh, and the, uh, uh, the particular parts of that life cycle give rise to particular sorts of patent searching. Um, some of which are, are actually, some of which are stated here. Are the important ones being the, the kind of novelty searching, patentability, freedom to operate searching. So, depending on really the objective of the of the of your of your search query, what are you trying to find out from patents? There's really different ways of of, uh, of really constructing your patent search. Different uh, different time periods to look at, for example, to, depending on really exactly what you're trying to do and which which of these life cycle stages that uh, you're interested in. So moving on to what is Marcouche, we've heard a lot about uh, Marcouche over the last few days. Uh, so what is the Marcouche structure is what we'll cover next. And uh, this is where we've got uh, uh, a, a kind of analogy as to, as, to, as to what a Marcouche structure actually is. So there's a kind of, a kind of potato man to the left hand side there with a lot of different things that you can kind of uh, plug into. Uh, and that's kind of analogous to a, a, a Marcouche structure. So the Marcouche structure would be, would have a coarse scaffold, which would be to the left-hand side there. And then the text of the pattern would describe a number of different variable parts, which could be attached into that coarse structure. Okay. So, uh, so that's the kind of thing in, 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 in this uh, analogy that would uh, uh, relate to the, like the specific compounds that the Marcouche encompassed. So these various different ways that you can assemble the combinations onto that scaffold would give rise to kind of different looking uh, potato men there, or different kind of specific compounds if, if we're considering this in the, in the chemical area. Okay. Uh, and the way that the molecule structures are set up in patterns, there can be millions, billions of these different uh, possible combinations around a scaffold that can be encompassed within a, a single molecule structure. Uh, so this is this is more of how we would uh, would look in practice then. So uh, uh, the the claim of this uh, of this patent would show a, a scaffold of the of the Marcouche, and then the text of the patent would indicate exactly what could be attached around that scaffold. So which what are the different possibilities of these different substituents? So that's what essentially gives rise to these uh, these, these these large numbers of permutations of possible specific compounds. And of course, it's very convenient to to, to patent or claim these within a single Marcouche structure. So the inventor doesn't have to list you know, hundreds or thousands or millions of different compounds that they want to protect. They can just do it within a single uh, Marcouche structure. And uh, it can be very complicated. So the, the, the actual full claim for this Marcouche structure is 12 real, real full pages of, uh, of, uh, of chemical drawings and text to describe, to describe the invention. So they can be really quite complex. And of course, the more complex they get, the, the more difficult it is really to, to, to understand uh, really the content of the Marcouche. And that's uh, really partly where the, the Chemaxon tools uh, come into play and to, to help you un understand the content of, uh, of Marcouche within patents. 
Uh, so just give you more an idea of the uh, number of uh, possible permutations in that particular structure on the previous slide. So it would be about uh, 10 to the 15 compounds would be protected by that uh, previous Marcuse structure. Uh, and of course, just within 12 pages, if they were all listed out as separate specific compounds, we can see here that would be a very, a very large stack of paper, more, more than two million miles tall. So of course, it's a very, uh, it's a very efficient and convenient way to protect that, uh, that, that, that large chemical space. Uh, and in fact, that particular pattern was an important one as, it, as it's protecting a particular blockbuster drug uh, from, from Merck. So that gives rise to the question, if we want to really find out and be, be able to search these, uh, uh, these Marku structures, how can, we, how can we do that? So if we have a particular structure that we're interested in, maybe thinking uh, that it could be, say, a potential new drug, how do we know whether that's uh, present in uh, the existing patent space? Okay, so our, our, our query structure could be a specific compound, or indeed it could be a Marku structure that we're trying to find within uh, 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 matches within patents. So we'll look at a case study really showing how that might work. So here's my uh, target compound. So this is what we're trying to find within the, within the patent space. Uh, so has it been disclosed before is what we want to know. Uh, and if so, uh, has it been disclosed for the treatment of uh, these diseases, diabetes, schizophrenia? Uh, so we've moved in now into the uh, instant J chem area. So with the, with a set of Marku structures for us to search from, so we can go in there and uh, go into the structure drawing part of, of instant J chem, uh, draw the structure that we want, and have it searched against the the collection of Marku structures. Uh, so in this case, it's the uh, collection of Marku structures that we at Thomson Reuters have uh, curated. And we come through into, into a, a, a set of hit uh, Marku structures. So the software is telling us that within these Marku structures and these patents, uh, there, there's, a, there's a match against my query structure. Okay, so if we choose one and go and investigate it further, and see how relevant that particular Marku structure is. Uh, we can see there that the, the, the full Marku structure is uh, listed, so with its core scaffold to, towards the top. And then these lists of possible values of the variable groups. So we can then investigate that uh, further with the uh, enumeration tool of, of instant JCAM. So we can see there towards the top right hand side we have the query structure, the hit structure, uh, and then the enumeration tool towards the bottom of the screen will generate some of the excuse me some of the uh, possible specific compounds which are encompassed within uh, within that Marcouche. So to give us an idea of the the actual chemical space covered by that Marcouche. So it's a very useful tool for really helping us to understand the content of a, of a hit Marcouche structure. So the, the, that Marcouche structure has really been unlocked. The enumeration tool is showing us the possible query structures held within. Uh, but as I said before, there can be a very large number of query structures within, uh, uh, possible structures within that Marcouche. So there are some filters built into to, to, uh, to JCAM that uh, can help, help point those uh, enumerated structures or narrow those down to uh, particular types of compound. Um, so we can filter by uh, bioavailability, uh, Lipinski rule of five, for example, to, 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 to really help f filter and focus the enumerated structures towards the kind of things that we'd likely to be interested in. Okay, so once we've generated a series of, uh, of specific compounds, uh, it's possible then to export those. Uh, so those specifics that have been generated from within that Marku structure, it's possible to export a series of those compounds uh, in a number of different uh, common formats. And of course, that allows uh, easy integration of those into, uh, into other systems that you may have for further exploring the, uh, uh, the, those structures. Uh, and of course, that's a very, a very big time saver. Uh, so um, previously, for the, the, the output of a Marku search from other systems had really been just a, a picture of the structure, no chance to enumerate, no chance to uh, 
uh, really save uh, and generate specific compounds in the, in the format that you can easily reuse elsewhere. So this is a, we see this as being a, a really big benefit of the tool. And of course, once you've identified a particular molecule structure that you're interested in, there are uh, summaries built into JCAM of the, of the actual patent itself. So uh, towards the middle of the screen there, there's uh, details of the, uh, the, the title of the particular patent, uh, who is the patent assignee, and then a list of the, uh, of the, patent, of the patent family just, uh, just kind of around here. So it's quite small, but it indicates there's a United States patent. There's a Norwegian patent and an Australian patent uh, covering this particular molecule structure. So we've got an idea there about the context of this particular molecule, what kind of patent, what does the patent actually describe about it, what's its functionality. So all of that uh, data is also held within the, uh, within the Instant JCAM tool. And then looking further into the original patent itself, uh, we've gone through there and picked out exactly how we've got that, uh, that, that uh, hit structure was derived from this particular marcouche. So all the parts in red are the parts that make up the particular combination permutation that uh, we were interested in at our particular, uh, for our particular query. And then that patent also says, again, it's very, it's very small that this uh, particular compound was claimed there as being uh, active for schizophrenia and, and diabetes, which is exactly what we were are hoping to find in our search. So once we've done the search, depending on the, on the objective of the search, if this was a patentability search, we could then uh, decide on a filing strategy. So of course we've uh, seen that there's a previous patent which covers the uh, structures that we are interested in. So we could uh, look for uh, some new patentable matter, uh, so maybe new synthesis for that compound, perhaps some new uses. Uh, could also be patented, but of course the actual target structure there is already in the patent space, so it can't be obviously protected again. Uh, if this were a validity search, then uh, again a patent attorney might uh, determine what, uh, what what the date of filing was for that particular patent, uh, and see if the patent was still in force, check the legal status uh, for that kind of uh, search or a freedom to operate search uh, to see if any licensing agreement would be required to use that technology. Uh, so to summarize then what we've, uh, we've talked about in my session, uh, so we've heard that patents are both legal and technical documents, so as well as actually legally protecting the invention. They're an excellent source of uh, state-of-the-art so technical information, uh, containing a full disclosure of the invention, so that uh, somebody skilled in the art can uh, repeat that invention. Uh, and then the patent literature is available there and should be searched uh, before a research project is started so that you don't reinvent the wheel, so to speak. Uh, and then before applying for a patent, make sure no one else has disclosed uh, the same or, or something similar. And then, of course, to make sure that you're not infringing someone else's patent. Okay. And then, of course, we know that uh, because of the, the, the complexity of those Marcou structures, it makes the uh, chemical pattern space especially hard to search. And this is, of course, where the, the, the Chemaxon tool comes in. So there's an excellent way of really searching both the explicit structures and those Marcou structures that just claim a, a, you know, a generic uh, scaffold with a lot of variable groups around. The Chemaxon tool really gives you a way into searching that data to give you the exact patterns that uh, you would need to find uh, against that particular technology. Okay, so I think that's uh, all from me, apart, to, apart from to ask if there's any questions. If there's no questions, then I'll say thanks for your attention. Thanks, Steve. Thank you.